Hi, I'd just like to talk to you about SP's most sophisticated electronic torque wrench that they have out in the market today. It's in this impact resistant case to protect it. It has a flexible head for convenience. It's a ratchet head design for both left and right hand rotation. It comes with a calibration certificate. The battery compartment is located at the rear of the handle. You can access that with a coin or a flat blade screwdriver and commonly available AA cells. It's more than your normal torque wrench. Uh, not only will it read torque as per a normal torque wrench would, but it also has sophisticated angle sensors which are combined and coupled with the load sensor so that you can take measurements or angle torque measurements. Okay, the torque wrench has an auto off feature, so after approximately two minutes, it will turn itself off to save batteries. To wake it back up, just press the clear button and you can see if we leave it on a level surface, it'll actually go through its uh, zero mode and calibrate itself. At the moment, it's telling us there that uh, it's cycling beam degrees, which is on zero degrees, and the current torque, which is set at 40 Newton meters. To change your torque uh, calibration as far as the measurement type that you want, then you can just cycle through uh, inch pounds, uh, foot pounds, kg centimeters, and back to Newton meters. So we'll leave it at 40 Newton meters for the moment and we'll have a look at what it does on a actual bolt. So we'll put the socket on the flex head here, put that on. Now you can see if you are in an area that you're constrained by some piece of equipment, the flex head gives you the ability to come up and over those types of obstructions. Um, the ratchet allows you to get the most convenient position so as we pull up on torque here, you can see the torque measurement increasing. Now when we get within 10%, then the green lights illuminate and start to flash. When I get to the exact torque that I want, the red light is on. So as soon as you see the red light come on, you let the torque go. Now what the unit does is it remembers your peak torque. So in fact, I've gone a tiny bit over there. I've pulled it to 41.6 Newton meters instead of 40. So it means that you can be very accurate with what you do. You just have to look for those lights. The green lights give you the warning and you can hear the audible sound. The red light tells you you've reached your target. This time we're gonna change the mode from peak to tracking. So if we press the and hold the US button, now you can see here that we can select a different mode. You can see that it goes from T for tracking and then back to P for peak. Okay, well this time we'll leave it on tracking and then we'll just exit. Okay, and now we're back to our normal situation where we're looking at zero degrees and 40 Newton meters. Now we'll have a look at the difference between peak and tracking. So in this case, as I've been load on, same thing applies, but it doesn't remember anything. So it's just showing you the load that I'm putting on and the load as it comes off. So load on, load off. That's the difference between peak and tracking. So now we're going to shift the unit into angle turn or torque turn to tighten. To do that, we need to select a degrees that we need to tighten. So for the purpose of the exercise, let's just say we want to move it 20 degrees. We select 20 degrees here. Now we've got to turn it to 40 Newton meters and then another 20 degrees. So let's see how that works. We put the unit 
onto the bowl. Okay, as we turn it, we're coming up to our 40 Newton meters. As soon as we get to that, we now go into degrees. When we get to our 20 degrees, there we go. So this is the easiest possible way. We don't have to use degree wheels. We have the single tool that will do both our torque and our degree setting.